Herzlich willkommen in Cornwall, die Bully Love Story aus England mit einem Boot und natürlich einem Bully, nämlich Cecile. Und was es mit ihr auf sich hat, das zeige ich euch jetzt. Hello, Good I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you too, How are you? What is that? It oh yeah, looks well, we amazing. Just, we just come back. That's our boat. So we sail around. Okay, wow. We sail around the coast with volunteers picking up rubbish from yeah. beaches that you can't get to by land. So we just got back yesterday and um, we've been unloading all the rubbish. So there's a big dumpy bag full of rubbish down there in the rowing boat. And this, this is for when it's too heavy for me to lift. This is, this ah, is to this is the lift use it as for, a for the crane. rubbish to get it from the boat. Yeah. Are you using Cecile only for, only for these cleaning stuff? He's my everyday car, has been for 26 years. No, really? Yeah, yeah. I found my mate Cecil here in Australia in 1998. Bought him for $400, which was about 200 euros at the time. And um, there wasn't any rust then, because Canberra is a long way from the coast, so there was no, and they don't salt the road, so he was pretty rust free, but the engine was a mess and some of the mechanicals were very tired. He was a um, airport shuttle bus from Canberra to Sydney oh, okay. with a team of taxi drivers driving him 24 7. So he already had 850,000 kilometers. As you can see, he's had a few dents and scratches over the years. <laughs> I gave up trying to keep him straight and pretty. He fell down a sand dune once, went end over end. So that's what all this shape oh. here is, because I never quite got him straight again after that. He's up to 13 times around the clock now. <laughs> 1,300,000. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And as far as I know, that wheel bearing has never been changed. Pretty much everything else has been changed several times, but because I, I bought him with full service history, and um, yeah, there's no record of that that wheel bearing ever being done. So, so that runs on raw, untreated vegetable oil, secondhand okay. waste oil from the pubs around here. All I do is filter it. So you are running on the oil, on the used oil from the pubs around. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Steve ist ein richtiger Enthusiast. Mit seinem Clean Ocean hat er wirklich schon einiges bewegt. Und als wir heute ankamen, war natürlich auch klar, er hat einiges zu tun. Ich helfe ihm jetzt. Deswegen kriegt der Bibo das erste Mal einen Anhänger hinten dran. Denn Steve macht es wirklich kleinteilig. Also immer wieder kleine Anhänger, bringt er Sachen weg zum Recyceln. Und dabei helfe ich ihm jetzt und bin gespannt, wie der Tag hier so verlaufen wird. Can you explain me what is typically in these bags and what are you doing with that? Probably about 75% of what we find is commercial fishing gear. So that's pretty much what's in this one is mostly ghost nets, you know, fishing nets and um, lobster pots, things like that. They're the heavy things. We would use this data and re recording of what we've got to actually contact the manufacturer and say, look guys, you're making a product here that we're finding washed up on the beach. Please, can you you know think about the end of life for your product? Please, can you maybe redesign it to use materials that are recyclable? We are now at the beach. Steve and his boys are building their canoes, to collect a little bit. I think the beach is very clean, but Steve says there is a whole lot of things that we will later find. How was the catch of the day? Yeah, it was the usual amounts of rubbish. We've got oh, really? 55 kilos. We, we weighed it on the beach. And Big Jeff? fender, a couple of those things, hundreds of bottles and some big stuff and loads. There was this particular beach, because there's usually big waves there, there's a lot of energy in the waves, so yeah. it smashes it up into tiny pieces. So my volunteers were busy picking up 
hundreds of these little tiny pieces, but it's better to pick them up before they're then smashed into microplastics yeah, absolutely. when you then can't see them and then they end up in the, in the food chain and end up in us. Is it your full-time job? Or is it just beside? No, I'm a mechanic and a marine engineer, and this is just voluntary, yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. So I work just part-time for money and then spend as much time as I can wow. doing this in, in my spare time. Cecil is always part of this business? Yeah, so the vans, you know, used to help me with my work. Um, used to help me lift engines out of boats, and we've been together for so long now, I can't really remember life before I had Cecil, to be honest. Yeah, it's been more than a quarter of a century. Probably the most ridiculous thing Cecil's ever done. Our old boat here that we use for taking volunteers to sea, she's 115 years old and she, she sprung a big leak. Um, we needed to get her out of the water to fix, to fix the hull of the boat. And the cranes around here are so expensive because the boat weighs 55 tons. So it's thousands and thousands of pounds to pay a crane. I took one look at Cecil and he kind of looked back at me with a like, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of look in his headlight. Um, yeah, so we buried an anchor in the quay over there and put Cecil in the gap between the big anchor and this cradle and then using a, the winch on the van and a huge lever. So it's basically a big steel bar and we wound up all the tension. The van made some horrible noises. The winch had smoke coming out of it and the trees that the van was tied to were all leaning. And then the boat moved only a centimetre, but the boat moved uphill. So we reset everything, did it again, reset everything, did it again. It took us several weeks, but bit by bit, inch by inch, Cecil pulled that 55 ton boat about 15 meters uphill. It's really <laughs> unbelievable. What do you think about to make a test drive with the ID bus to get the feelings? How is it to drive the new one? Yeah, that'd be great, man. That'd be awesome. Where's all the shakes and rattles and <laughs> noisiness? And we can have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we can. We're not just shouting at each other. I really like the regen braking. You can actually almost feel the energy going back in the batteries. Mm -hmm. I really like that. It's, it's one of the things about, about Cecil is when you're going down a hill, you're just like, oh, all this kinetic energy, I'm just turning into, into heat. It's like, no, can I put it back in the petrol tank? So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's great. Obviously, the main thing is the steering was on the wrong side, guys. Ah, uh, we can work on it. <laughs> you put one on the other side. Next year, we, Volkswagen itself, are holding a big event in Hanover, which is uh, approximately more than 6,000 vehicles, more than 100,000 yeah. people during the weekend. Yeah. And I would love to invite you and I uh, awesome. would love to see you, Cecil, yeah. and uh, your family there. Well, that'd be great, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thank you cool. for the invite. We will fill up with veg oil and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we'll do the big road trip. Looking forward to see you in Hanover. Thanks, Frank. Thank Cheers, Christian. Was Thanks, brother. Pleasure for me. Cheers. Das war sie, die Bully Love Story aus Cornwall mit Steve und seinem Cecil, dem Bus, der Unglaubliches leistet. Und die ganze Sache hat mich sehr beeindruckt, was er tut, neben seinem Job den Strand sauber zu machen. Können wir alle machen, wenn wir unterwegs sind. Und äh, die Flut ist schon da. Steve macht sich gleich mit seinem Boot auf die Reise. Ich gehe mit Bibo auf zur nächsten Bully Love Story, auf die ihr euch schon freuen könnt.